Good afternoon all, time to open some posts, so it is what I am calling post bag. Now this is one of these curious ones that is all marked with Chinese stuff and it says Shenzhen on it, but it actually came from a UK seller, so possibly a UK warehouse, uh, turned up certainly very quickly, so somebody's warehousing this stuff and distributing it uh, locally. I don't want to cut too deep in this because I believe it's wires. Yes, lots of wires and a PCB. So these are PCIe cables, I believe. PCI Express sort of power distribution system. I don't know much about this. I'm gonna to have to do some research, but there are some funny oddities like these, uh, which are eight pin. They have a sliding removable two pin thing, which has been added on to the six pin. All this is though is three 12 volts plus 12 volts and three minus 12 volts so it's just 12 volts and zero volts but distributed over lots of connectors uh, so oh all of these seem to have the the six plus two connector that's interesting and then this circuit board is a bunch of these uh, six pin PCIe connectors so that will plug into there it's a sort of distribution and this edge connector which I believe is designed to plug onto uh, server power supplies. Now I've never seen this stuff before because the last time I was in IT was 20 years ago and we weren't using server power supplies with this sort of edge connector. There's also a switch here and it just says um, adjust switch slide switch until powered on. So I think the idea is that you just find the position there appear to be three positions that just kind of works. But anyway, all this stuff is just 12 volts. I imagine on this power supply connector, there are other voltages, but this distribution, and this has been specifically designed for mining rigs, that's cryptocurrency mining, uh, only distributes lots and lots of 12 volts. So what's this all for? Well, um, you saw me recently take apart a, an ant miner mining rig well, I've since bought a couple more mining rigs because that one was faulty and irreparable by the look of it. So let's just take a quick look at one of those. So here's a Ant Miner D3. Now I bought this because it was cheap. I think this one was 40 quid and it was virtually brand new. Everything was incredibly clean. I don't know whether the guy had uh, done a, a really good cleanup job on it, but you can see here these PCIe connectors and they're just paralleled. So the only reason there are three on this board is, and this board and this board, is for additional current. So these cables will simply plug into here and then connect up to the, either this board I bought, if I'm planning to run it from mains, because this, is, this will be the output connector from a mains power supply. But that will be winter mode, where I'm using these mining rigs, not just for mining cryptocurrency, which they don't mine much these days. In fact, they don't mine enough to pay for the electricity that they use. So these things make a loss, which is why they're so cheap. But I want to work now because it's spring on a summer mode, and that will be cryptocurrency mining on solar power. Because the idea of these cryptocurrency ant miners, which as I say, originally cost thousands of pounds and are now incredibly cheap, 40 quid for this one, virtually brand new is to use them as heaters in the winter, but in the summer they'll be pretty much redundant because I won't need the heat. So I want to try and run them 24 seven. And recently I've been doing experiments with just simply pulling out some of these cables. And this mining rig can still mine, as long as you power up the control board, which is under here, with either one or two or three hash boards connected. It will function uh, in a sort of partial way you don't have to have all the hash boards running at the same time and therefore you can get this thing to run at quite well, less power consumption modes. And I need to do some experiments with powering up one of these hashing boards and then just powering up a second one and seeing if the controller just acknowledges it and starts to use it and then switching off the second one and then powering up the third one and just trying all different combinations to see what uh, throws this controller off balance and what it will tolerate because if the uh, sun is shining during the day I might want to power all three of these boards 
At night, I may only want to power one, or I might want to shut the thing down altogether, or perhaps just power the controller, which is this one here. That's its power connector. I just want to try lots of different combinations for day and night scenarios with solar power. So that's what these are for. Now, I might actually cut these in half, possibly, because if, if I'm powering this thing off solar power, these might be coming from, I don't know, either lead acid or lithium ion. Uh, battery packs or they might be coming from DC to DC converters. It depends. The ant miners have a, a range of voltage. I think it's from 11 to 13 volts. But the trouble is if my power supply is going to deviate outside of that and I need to do all these tests to see whether those hashing boards will run at a bit more than 13 volts and I might blow up an ant miner, who knows, uh, whether they'll run at a bit less than 11 volts, in which case I can connect these cables straight to the batteries or whether I need to use uh, buck boost DC to DC converters to stabilize the voltage at 12 volts, which is what these ant miners run on. Uh, so I need, yeah, just need to do a, a myriad of tests. So these, these may be connected to a distribution uh, similar to that, but from uh, a 12 volt battery, or they may be connected to various buck boost converters. Let's take a look at these on eBay. So this is a breakout board plus 10 pieces cable for various HP server power supplies, uh, which I might buy actually because they're very cheap. They're only about 10 pounds, something like that. I've seen them cheaper as well. Uh, power module mining six pin. Um, so it was six pounds, which is approximately $7.40. I paid in pounds, I think, and free shipping. And these came from country 11 zone, but they don't have any available now. And I think that's because these were really quite cheap. Uh, in fact, I bought two of these because I wanted to have lots of these um, cables with the six pin connectors to try all sorts of different experiments on my powering the ant miners from solar. And on to the next one, which is this. And I think it's Arduinos of various different flavors. So let's take a look at those. There are four here in total. And I've got a funny feeling that some of these are the Pro Minis that actually have the 168 chip. Um, so it's only got half the memory of the 328. In fact, it's got uh, 16K, I think, rather than the 32K. So let's take a closer look at this one. And uh, I think you can probably just about see there that this is a Mega 168PA. So these Pro Minis are being sold uh, quite a bit cheaper than the 328 Pro Minis, uh, but of course they've only got half the memory. Now, if your final code only uses half the memory, well then this will do, won't it? So that's that one. Uh, what's this one? Is it the same? It might be the same. This one, you don't shine, reflect the light off it, we do at a different angle. That one appears to be a 328. So this one's an 80 mega 328p. So that's a, a 32k. Uh, yes, that's a 16 meg crystal, isn't it? Yeah. So 32k uh, RAM in there. What's this one? Oh, this one's slightly different again because the chip is very tiny. Oh, that really is quite weird, isn't it? That's got a really tiny 80 mega chip on it. Compare it with that one. Uh, let's find out what it is in terms of memory. I think it's that way around. And that's a 328p, but I liked the look of the very tiny chip. So I thought, yeah, I'll have one of those. And finally, this one's totally different. This, I think, is what they're calling a strong version uh, of a nano. I think this is actually a nano, totally different form factor, of course, but it's a strong version because it's got these triple breakouts so that you've got um, VCC and ground for every single signal and lots of these color-coded um, DuPont pins, header pins. Also on here, of course, you've got the uh, USB to serial converter and a USB socket these look like power sockets so yeah this is effectively a nano because the pro mini doesn't have usb to serial you actually have to hook up a usb to serial converter to the tx and rx lines here this one it's all built in but it's got 
these extra ones on here. So I thought, yeah, that's another interesting variant. Now, is this a 328 or a 168? That tiny chip, it's very hard to, uh, to see. 328? Yeah, I think that's a 328. So lots of different Pro Minis. So let's take a look at these uh, one by one on eBay. So the first one is this CH340G. Now that's the USB to serial converter chip. Nano, they're calling it, V3. Strong, this is the name they're giving to these, the ones with these, all these um, three pin connectors. Microcontroller board, 80 mega 328P. Uh, this says $4.13. There's actually a shipping charge on here, but I can't remember whether I paid that. These shipping charges seem to come and go. Um, ordered over two months ago, so this stuff's coming through very slowly at the moment. It is coming through eventually, but um, I think they're batch shipping these things. So it takes a long time for them to actually ship it, and then it takes uh, another three or four weeks to uh, get here. Um, this one, World Chips. In fact, all these Arduinos came from World Chips. So here we have the Pro Mini. Uh, 3.3 volts, 8 megs, or 5 volts, 16 megs. Uh, now there are various choices here. It says 80 mega 328 replace 80 mega 128. I think they mean 168, but uh, we've got 5 volts, 16 megs, which is the uh, one with the very small chip, but it's also got, it's not a crystal, it's in a tin can, but it's a ceramic resonator. Or you can have... Uh, the 3.3 volt, 8 megahertz. Oh, that's odd. That's showing that as a ceramic resonator. Or you can have the 5 volt, 16 megahertz. Not that one. Yeah, with the crystal. So you've got the full size uh, crystal oscillator there. So I've got a combination of two of these, I think. I don't think I've got the 3.3 volt uh, in my order here. Uh, but uh, $2.21 for the crystal version. Uh, these are all the same price, I think. $2.33 if you want the uh, tiny chip version. Again, they're showing a shipping charge, but I'm not sure whether I paid that or not. And again, World Chips. And finally, one from this listing, which is the Pro Mini 80 Mega 168 or 328. And you've got a selection box here. So that's the 168. They're 16 meg, 5 volts, both of them. But you've got the choice of the uh, lower capacity chip, the 168, 16K memory, or the 328, 32K uh, program memory, that is. Um, the 168 is only $1.53, and the 328 is slightly more expensive, $2.13. So moving along to the next item, uh, I have this. Now this has just come in today, so we'll see what the shipping... <laughs> yes. Oh, that's really bad, isn't it? We'll see what the shipping time is. Oh, I think I just cut into the board. Oh, these are small. These are really small. These are TTP223 touch switch boards which say touch on them, 10 pieces. Let's get them out of the bag. If I can open the bag, that is. Yeah, they're teeny tiny. In fact, let's compare them with uh, the one I was using on my shed humidity receiver. Well, I say was using, I still am using it on my shed uh, humidity and temperature receiving unit. And if I press that switch, that light comes on. And the shed fan will now be on. Uh, oh, actually, it should after a short delay because it takes a while for the airflow to move through the shed. Should affect humidity, but it may not. But I'll leave that on for a moment. Um, so, yeah, these are really a lot smaller. In fact, that's not the size at all, is it? These are ridiculously small. No, that's not the size. I'll have to break off another couple because that's got um, a little edge strip on it. So here they are compared with that. I mean, they're so tiny. <laughs> Can you even get your finger on these? Yeah, just about. So the reason I've wanted these is because I want to add them to my Arduino boards. Let's look at this one. Uh, actually, I put a socket on this one because I'm kind of thinking 
if I don't get this staggering right, I might end up soldering stuff onto here. Who knows? Uh, and I've got this one here. So the idea will be to build one of these, but with the addition of the touch switch on there. So I wanted to buy a new touch switch. So that'll fit on there quite nicely. Um, also, of course, the NRF uh, 24L01 transceiver I want to put on there, but I don't particularly want to put this baseboard on there. And in fact, the only thing on there is a 3.3 volt regulator. So I've ordered ages ago some of these little breakout boards that just simply have a 3.3 volt regulator on them, but they still haven't come in and it's been about two months. It's a long wait. And then I'll redesign this so that it's got not only a nano and an OLED and a touch switch, but also the 3.3 volt regulator sitting as a little module on here. Um, of course, the sensor I don't need because that's in the shed. Um, so really, it's just these components. Yeah, the, the nano, the OLED, the transceiver, and I can do a, a two row. The, the main reason this baseboard is useful for this transceiver is because you've got these two rows of pins, which are a nuisance for breadboard. You can't put them in a breadboard. But of course, you can put them on a PCB. So that's fine. But I do need that 3.3 volt regulator to provide 3.3 volts for that board because that's what it is. It's got 5 volt tolerant inputs, but it's a 3.3. Did that go down at all? I don't know. So yeah, these are in so I can um, change my design of this board to incorporate that. But I'm still waiting for the 3.3 volt regulator. I suppose I could guess what size they are, but I really want that so that I can uh, make a board, which is essentially this receiver. Oh, the sun's going in and out today. Um, but on a printed circuit board. You can see that this is right on the limit of receiving because at the moment it's not updating. Oh, it is updating now. And it actually depends where I move my hands, <laughs> whether or not this updates using the data coming from the shed. So we're right at the limits of the reception range. That stopped again there. If I move my hands around, it will carry on. I don't know whether that's falling particularly. It should do with the sun coming out. Yeah, maybe it is. The humidity is falling ever so gradually, possibly. Let's take a look at these things on eBay. So these are they, uh, ordered on February the 9th. It's now March the 30th. So yes, that's over six weeks, isn't it? So stuff is slow. 10 pieces, TTP223, capacitive touch switch, button self-lock. Uh, self-lock means there's a toggle mode. Oh yes, that's right. These have got the... Uh, the three solder pins or the various solder pins so that you can select whether you want the toggle mode and whether you want to invert uh, the on and off mode. So 10 pieces for $1.64, very cheap. Oh, 30 cents shipping. Again, I can't remember whether I paid that. They just seem to change these listings constantly. Uh, these came from Luckiness87. And so these are today's post bag items. Now, big thanks to my sponsor, JLC PCB. And uh, as soon as I get the 3.3 volt regulator boards, I can lay out another one of these Giuliano uh, no solder boards, increase the staggering, see if I can finally get that to work. And then this can replace this lash up. Um, also, big thanks, of course, to patrons who uh, are always supporting me and my channel. Uh, if you'd like to become a patron of this channel, then you can click this link here. Another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, you can click this link here. Cheerio!